it's almost ridiculous to say this, but at, at age 21, you are one of the oldest guys in the lottery. Do you, how do you view that? Do you think that people, you know, say, uh, you know, uh, maybe he doesn't have a lot of upside? I mean, do, do you get that a little bit? What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Thankfully, I haven't gotten that yet. Um, you know, playing at Kentucky and in, in our starting five, I was the oldest one. You know, they always called me the veteran, the most experienced one. Or sometimes my teammates even called me grandpa because I've been there almost the longest other than the seniors. So, um, you know, thankfully I haven't gotten, you know, anything from the scouts and the coaches and the GMs and uh, the people saying, yeah, he's 21, you know, he's old. You know, these people are younger. Um, they have more potential, more upside than him, you know, just because they're two, uh, two years younger than he is, you know. So uh, thankfully I haven't heard that yet. Hopefully I don't hear it. But... You know, I feel that age, you know, it's not a factor. You know, you look at all the athletes now, you know, in their 30s and, you know, in the upper 30s, you know, and they're still playing extremely well in the league. And uh, people who have come out the draft who are older than me, you know, at times they've done exceptionally well in the league. So I truly feel that age has nothing to do with it. It's just all about, you know, your heart, your determination and how well you play. Something that surprised me a little bit, looking at your toughness, your athleticism, your length, just your overall activity level, was that your defensive rebounding numbers are not spectacular, while your offensive rebounding numbers definitely are. What do you think is, is the cause for that? Um, earlier in the season, um, I became a little hesitant, a little tentative, and I relied a lot on Marcus and Daniel. You know, uh, my first two years there, I was a five man, so I was constantly in the paint. Therefore, it made rebounding a little bit easier. But this year, I was on the perimeter a lot, and I tend to, tend to set back and and just watch the Marcus rebound. You know, expecting him to get all the rebounds and um, you know leak it out in transition or. Whenever my man would shoot the ball, I'm on the perimeter. I didn't really attack the glass as much as I could have and should have. So I, I think that had a lot to deal with it. But towards the end of the season, I tried to pick it up, you know. But uh, our offense rebounded like um, like crazy, I guess you could say, because it was probably my best uh, year offense rebounding, you know. But I was a little bit slacking on the defensive end. And, um, you know, I just think it, it just dealt with, you know, relying on other players to do it instead of myself doing it. Talking to most NBA teams, it, it, it sounds like your stock is somewhere in that 7 to 12 range. Now, looking at the teams that are actually drafting there, they all seem to be pretty well set at the power forward position, whether it's Detroit, the Clippers, Utah, Indiana, the Hornets, Memphis. That's 7 through 12 right there. They all have you know almost franchise guys there at the 4. Any thoughts on that? Does that concern you at all? I have no concern with that. Um, I want to do whatever my teammates and my team want of me and expect me to do, you know, whether that's backing up the superstar who is already at the four or the, the player who is already at the four, you know, providing minutes for him when he's not in the game or even starting on certain teams or even uh, being molded into a three man. You know, I'll do whatever a team wants of me. And that's definitely why I'm working on my ball handling and my shooting and uh, my perimeter play and defense is because you never know what's going to happen. You know, you look in the league now and you see the power forwards are starting to grow in size and uh, be six foot 10, some six foot 11. So, um, you know, I see the power forward position is definitely uh, starting to change. So I feel like if I broaden my game and, uh, you know, just get better defensively, uh, get better strength in my lower body and stamina, you know, I could possibly be molded into a three man and uh, you never know what will happen. You know, so definitely I see myself as just a forward, not necessarily power forward or small forward, but in the middle. How much does it matter to you how high you get drafted? Is that something that's that's really important to you? Oh, the number one thing that's important to me is getting drafted. You know, my main goal is to be a first rounder and uh, I want to be Lotto if that's possible. You know, so I'm going to do whatever it is in my power to be Lotto and first round. You know, but personally, I feel that I could go first round if possibility should go first round. But, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You know, there's been times in the past where a person was supposed to be lottery in the first round and then didn't get drafted to the second round. So uh, you never know what's going to happen. But personally, I feel that I want to go Lotto and I want to go first round. If you were not a basketball player, any, what, what profession would you go into? 
I'd have your job. Um, my degree is in communication and leadership development, so I could take that into any field that deals with sports. That's hopefully what I want to do um, as far as camera work, uh, behind the camera in the studio, uh, pushing buttons, or even, you know, going out interviewing people or uh, writing and typing, you know, so I can take it in any field I want. But if I wasn't playing basketball, then I'd look to do something like that around sports, you know, whether it be like the broadcasting standpoint of interviewing people or even marketing part of, uh, you know, getting stuff out there, you know, getting people well-informed and more informed on information about a team or a person or even scouting, you know. So I definitely look to do something in the sports field. You fielded a ton of questions, you know, in your three-year career at Kentucky. The media coverage is is, is huge. Uh, how good of a job do you think, you know, as a communications guy, do, you know, journalists do of asking you different types of questions, kind of broadening your horizons and maybe inspiring you to, uh, you know, talk about new things? Um, they do a great job from what I've, from what I've been through, what I've experienced, um, just seeing and going through, you know, a lot of interviews, a lot of uh, media, TV, newspapers, and so forth. So um, they've definitely kept me interested, and uh, they've definitely made it more interesting by having the cameras um, and just made me uh, – made it more appealing to myself, I guess you could say. So um, it's, it's it's picking up every single day. You know, my mind's just going left and right about what I want to do um, after the NBA, you know, and seeing people interview other people, um, you know, just seeing everything that goes into it, you know, the process, the hard work, and the development of it. Uh, it's definitely been keeping me interested in something that I uh, hopefully could look forward to doing in the future. Patrick, I want to thank you so much. I know that you have a bunch of uh, interviews coming up here with NBA teams. Uh, best of luck in that, and, uh, and thanks for your time, okay? Thank you. Appreciate it.